happy Thursday. Thursday, right? February 1st. Um, I am here with our mompreneur series, so let me just get my invite on. Uh, cool, all right, so I sent it our guest an invite already, and Lauren is ready to go, so I'm gonna pop her on. This is so much, oh my goodness gracious. Um, so, um, here we go. I see her already, hey Lauren. Hey, it works. <laughs> that was like super simple too. I've been trying to do it on my um, like page, and it's not letting me, so I'm gonna have to play around with it more, um, but this was super easy, how are you? I'm good. I'm sorry. My dogs are barking in the background. I'm going to go open the door for them so they don't bug it. Oh, no, yeah. My daughter crying upstairs. We just heard it. <laughs> One of those guys. Um, thanks for everybody who's getting on. I see Maria's on. Hey, Katie from the UK. I heard you talk to my sister. She's in Europe right now, too. How fun. Um, thanks for connecting with her. <laughs> um, if you guys can hear me, just do me a solid and uh, drop me a hey below so I can hear you um, and make sure that everything's good with the sound. Uh, otherwise, I can hear Lauren. Good, Lauren, you can hear me, right? Yes, I can. Okay, cool, cool. So we um get started. I'm gonna pull my comments up on my page so I can make sure I can see and we can go through and answer some questions, kind of as we go. Um, all right, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, oh, Maria, you can hear me. Good, good, good. All right, thank you for checking in, girl. All right, I'm gonna jump on and get started uh, so that we can respect your time and that we can get all the goodies on. But I'm so excited. Uh, I reached out to Lauren and she was like, wait, you want to do what? <laughs> so I'm glad that she was like, yeah, we can totally get together and do this interview because I feel like this is going to give so much value to all those moms who like stand in the kitchen like this. Like, what are we doing? Um, you know, if you're a mom like that, hit like, because that's me. Um, I literally, <laughs> can I tell you that I stood in the kitchen this morning trying to make breakfast and I needed to go shopping and I ate leftovers from dinner. So I had like pasta and meatballs and I was like, yeah, it is what it is. Like that was, that's the hot mess I'm at right now. So um, I'm excited to pick your brain. I'm going to give you guys a quick little bio on Lauren, and then I'm going to ask you to kind of tell us any of the gaps that we left. So, um, all right. So Lauren is a 35 year old mom. She has two teenagers. She's a wife to a husband of 15 years, which is just bow down today. Years. Today. Today. Oh, happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank love, you. Love, 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 love for that, guys. That's awesome. Um, and you're spending time with us. That's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, her passion is getting healthy. Uh, you know, she was, sorry, living in a 400 pound body that didn't work anymore. That's crazy. Look at her. You're like, wait, what? And I'm going to, I'm sure we're going to hear a little bit about that. Yes. Too. So the past five years, she took all those lessons to get fit, strong and apply them to her everyday battles. And she learned to take most comforting foods because who's a comfort eater, right? And turn them into healthy foods to fuel her body and her soul. And I love this one. She sent this to me and I just like, uh, chills. her passion is to fill people's hearts and plates with kind words and loving is that not – oh, that is, that is amazing. So let's kick off with – start with filling in those gaps from that story and just tell us kind of a little bit about you and, uh, you know, we want to hear about your family. Okay, so um, I was 19 years old, and I met my husband. We Well, not necessarily met my husband. We grew up together, and um, he walked through the front door of my best friend's house. Um, her grandfather had died, and he walked in the door, and I was like, whoa. Who's that? That night I had a dream that we were going to get married. Six months later, we were married. And um, it was a rocky road. Um, we started off our uh, marriage pregnant. And a lot of people didn't believe in us, but it's pretty big testimony today to say where we are. Um, because yeah. we knew love and God led our life. So we knew we were going to get where we were. But along our journey, uh, we faced a lot of struggles. Financial struggles, emotional struggles, um, grieving from loss, uh, just, you know, the typical relationship family issues um, combined with being completely broke, <laughs> really young and having two kids and one daughter who um, has learning disabilities and behavioral, at the time had behavioral issues. So it was very confusing. And I turned my world and to food. And growing up, I was always a an overweight kid. My husband was the athlete. He was like the star jock basketball player of high school. And I was the 100% complete opposite. Um, I was a chorus nerd who uh, just went to youth group and hung out <laughs> with, tried to stay out of trouble. Um, and I just never really found like who I was or my niche. And I struggled with like, you know, just like the typical things that a lot of people struggle with 
growing up. So um, after my second daughter was born, I had some severe issues with healing and uh, I got, I spiraled into a really bad depression and it lasted for about five or six years. And I was uh, maybe a little bit longer. Um, always on a journey of like, knowing I needed to lose weight. It was made very clear by a lot of people that I was different than other people. Um, so I was always on a path to try to find the best way to lose weight, whether it was the cabbage soup diet or Atkins diet or Weight Watchers. I was always on a path, but I didn't know what was going to work for me. And one day I just decided that I didn't want anything to work for me. I wanted myself to work for me. I just wanted to have a healthy family. I wanted to escape depression. I wanted to just live a better life. And I saw a path in front of me that I could do that. And over the past four, five, almost six years, I lost 160 pounds. I gained like maybe 20, 30 back in the past year but i'm back on the wagon of losing again and just living a healthy life and in that process um, i really found that it doesn't matter if it's just me that that's just doing this that it's a reflection of my whole family because my whole family's life changed Um, my husband lost over 100 pounds um my kids are healthy strong athletes and you know i didn't want them to go on a path of um, living with the choices, like seeing their mom on a diet. I wanted our whole family to just be healthy. So um, I grew up in an Italian family, um, a, Italian on one side, uh, French, Dutch, something other on the other side, but the strong dominant part of my family was my grandmother. Um, my dad's mother it was Italian and she was an amazing cook. She grew up in the South moved up here um, when she married my grandfather and lived with his mother who didn't speak English. And so she had Southern cooking, Italian cooking, and she passed that all on to me. And it it was so amazingly delicious, but incredibly unhealthy. But I learned to entertain and to cook. um, And I took all of that and I just kind of redirected our lives into like whole clean foods and I I don't get any complaints. So it's working. (laughs) That's incredible. Yeah. So, um, Um, the, um, the, one of the tough things that's been hard and I'll be honest with my kids is they go to school and they see their friends eating Mm. like, gummy fruits or Doritos and junk foods and stuff like that. So um, one of the lessons that I hope I can share today is um, just reassuring that, you know, I'm not their parent, those kids' parents, I'm your parent and, you know, and just um, emphasizing healthy eating because we are athletes. So. Oh my goodness. All right. So like a hundred things just popped into my head that I wanted to say. The first one I want to say is congratulations to both of you guys. Cause I know you guys work super hard on just making your family healthier and that's huge. Um, the one thing I was thinking when you started talking about, especially because you have teenagers, right? Like my kids are little, Dean is 11, my stepson. So like that is, we're tough there. That's, we're hitting, you know, that point. But the the little ones are like, whatever, right? Um, but the teenagers, like they, I remember that's when I gained all of my weight when I was a teenager, when I had a job and I could buy my own foods and sneak them in under my bed and um, (laughs) make my own decisions. Like I, that was for me. Um, and I remember when we got started with eating healthier in our family, Dean used to, he was five, right? So all he ate was chicken nuggets and French fries. And I slowly like was like, okay, let's take this out and take this out. And then eventually he didn't notice. But, you know, seeing that your kids were still like old enough, right? They're probably like, what, like nine, like eight, they're in like that age where they know, like we've been eating this way for so many years. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, at five, I can trick things and he still didn't know. Uh, What would you say or how could you and how could you help another parent like make this transition when they're like, oh my gosh, like I know I want to make changes and I'm not making six or seven meals. We've talked about that in the past couple of interviews too. Everyone's like, nope, like I'm not doing that. How do you start to transition that and talk to them about having a healthier lifestyle, um, whether your kids are younger or like in your case, when they're old enough to be like, uh, yeah, but everybody else is eating X, Y, Z, like I'm not eating this type of thing. Well, I, one of the things, like in the beginning, it was a struggle because for me, it was that pull of, I don't want my kids to like feel like, you know, I'm sacrificing anything for them, like, or they're Mm. 
sacrificing anything or, you know, I'm making them do something different. The one thing that I did do that was really important is I educated myself. I educated myself why I was doing this and why I was bringing healthy foods into the house and how it was going to benefit them. And I taught them that. I shared that like, well, we're going to have this instead of this because let's talk about the ingredients in those foods. So I think my daughters were like eight and 10. I have a 12 year old, but she's going to be 13 and she is like 13 (laughs) in like two months. So three months. So, um, it's having open, honest conversations, like just being like, you know, we don't eat this because, you know, show them the ingredients list. Like there's chemicals and there's things in here that aren't healthy, but we can have other things that taste really well too. The number one thing that has helped me and don't get me wrong, wrong. My kids still want certain things and I don't deny them, but we don't have it in the house. So yeah. once, you know, you have your, your fun, it's gone. Like I don't keep it in the house. I don't, when I grocery shop, I don't stock up on Oreos and Doritos and all those kinds of things. Like if we have a party or whatever, and like, you know, we're flexible with it because I think it's really important for me. Cause I know that if I go in this restricted phase that I'm just going to like crash and I'm going to yep, yep. whatever I want. So, you know, we have flexibility with it, but we may, we try and make, the healthiest choices. But the number one thing was when they were younger was getting them involved in the cooking process and teaching them, you know, if like all about fruits and vegetables. And I, I have, I came across a post maybe like five years ago where my girls were making a salad and they wanted to make it themselves. So I pulled everything out. I got their little cutting boards. I showed them how to use the knives and we were doing it together. And it brought tears to my eyes because that was the beginning. That was like, they were, they were young enough to like be impressionable and they're still impressionable, but like, right. let's, let's be real. Teenagers are stuck in their ways. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. um, like getting them involved in that cooking process and teaching them about healthy foods and, you know, making them feel important and a part of, you know, the foods that they eat and just talking and being like, no, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to have a healthy body. And one of my daughters, she really, last year, she really, really struggled with it because um, a couple of her friends, um, she's an athlete. She plays on three different basketball leagues. She is strong and she is powerful and she has got like shredded legs and she's like really, really like fit. And um, she's like, well, so-and-so eats this and she's super tiny. And how come I'm so tall and so muscular? You know? And I said, well, who's the fastest in their grade? You know, the reason why you are is because you eat so healthy and you work hard. So um, just reiterating and reassuring them that like, we're making these not punish. I mean, this isn't a punishment. This is like, yeah. you know, making sure that you're eating healthy because our bodies deserve it. And so tips would be get involved in the cooking process, um, get them involved in the grocery shopping process. Um, being honest, having open, honest conversations. I had to have an open, honest conversation with my 14 year old the other day. She loves bacon and cheese sandwiches from Dunkin' Donuts. Like this kid Mm -hmm. loves them. And I, pulled up some information. I was like, how can I actually reach her? Like, how can I get her to understand that? Like the, it's not necessarily the bacon, egg and cheese. That's the problem. It's the source of where the bacon and the egg and the cheese come from and how the the over-processing and where the animals come from. Cause I really believe in um, grass fed, organic heritage breed meats and stuff like that. And that's another story. But, um, so I talked to her and I just told her, and she's an animal lover. And I told her, I said, you know, in these mass productions, you, you know, everything's popped in a microwave and, you know, the animals aren't really taken care of. And that was all she had to hear was that the animals weren't taken care of. And now she they never wants language. to eat fast food from bacon, fast food ever again. So it was, I didn't make anything up. It was the truth. And I dialed it down for you know, her heart and stuff, because what I saw was online was not appropriate for a 14 year old, but it very much was a truthful conversation. Like the source of where this food comes is not, not, it's it's disgusting. So just having open conversations. And if it's a littler kid, like, especially chicken nuggets were always huge. 
I work second shift. So my husband was always in charge unless, and this is where crock pot meals coming from, unless I made a cook ahead meals and remembered to press start on the crock pot, he was making meals at night. So he always went to quick convenience foods. Like the kids always talk about how him and his dad always make the best hot dogs. And like when they were little, their best memories are like mac and cheese out of a box. And like, I remember the first time I ever bought Annie's mac and cheese. Oh my gosh, my kids had an absolute meltdown because the box was blue. <laughs> so right. um, it, it really was a slow transition, but it was consistent. I consistently showed up making healthier foods. And let's be honest, if it's not in the house, they're not gonna eat it. And they're going to yeah. be freaking hungry and like, yeah. they're going to have to eat. So, I mean, my kids still be like, oh my gosh, there's nothing to eat in this house because you actually have to make the meals. The right. thing that I've found really convenient is on a Sunday, if my, I know Kylie, my oldest loves breakfast sandwiches. So I will buy the ingredients that are, uh, I am comfortable with her eating and healthy and I'll make them ahead of time and she can pop it in the toaster. She can pop it in the microwave. So convenient things like that make it a lot yeah. easier to work. Like instead of just buying the, you know, the Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches, you're saving money because you can make twice as much of your own, buy your own right. muffins, you make your own eggs, you make your own bacon, you put it together, you wrap it in some wax paper and you put it in the freezer. You know, she's old enough to be able to pop it in the toaster oven herself. So. Mm -hmm. um, things like that have helped a lot is, and then just open conversations, just talking and not hiding anything and educating myself. I really find it really important to educate myself on my food sources and knowing and taking the extra time. I use, um, a meat delivery company that's all organic. It saves me a ton of money instead of buying organic meats in the grocery store. I have it delivered to my house. So things like that really have helped me to live a healthier life. And it's over the past five or six years, it's just become who they are and what they do and what they eat. And they've just been, you know, I can't control what they do when they go to school. They have a lunch account. I try to pack lunches for them all the time, but I hope that I've equipped them with the right decisions to make in the outside as teenagers. But let's be honest. I know that when they go on field trips, they're going to the food court at the mall because that's where the school always takes them. And I know they're going to Panda Express. So mm -hmm. <laughs> one yeah. mile is not going to kill them, but we try not to make it a habit. Um, I love a lot of what you said about like the moderation and stuff. And I had, I had a question and then I wanted to get to the rest of these, but I do have one question about like, if I want to start to learn more about like, where my food's coming from and because I used to be really good at slacks like once I got pregnant and then had the baby like I found myself buying more convenience foods for them I've noticed changes in like my kids behaviors and so this is like a really good push for me but if I'm going to be like all right I want to learn more there's so much information out there right there's like the Pinterest and the YouTube and Google and everyone is an expert do you have and I don't really put me on the spot of it but is there like a trusted source that you go to to like check out information that you could suggest for parents um, like a website or a place that you're like, okay, this is like legit and not just somebody's. Yeah. Um, honestly, I was telling you last night, like I don't Google anything anymore. Basically I go to like YouTube or Pinterest, but, um, <laughs> there are a lot of movies that I watch on Netflix. Okay. I know there's a lot of controversy about the movie, what the health, but for me, that was really eye opening in as far um, and there's this movie called, um, or it's a series, it's on Netflix, it's called um, Rotten, and there's, okay. there's uh, also, I'm going to type them in the comments, uh, so it was Rotten, What the Health, um, <laughs> then there, I can't remember, I'll have to leave it in the comment section, but um, it's this main companies, um, I just was like, okay, so what's the difference between Applegate Sunday cured, um, cured bacon versus Smithfield? I know it's a $2 difference, but what is the difference? So I actually Googled this. I went into Google and I put in Smithfield meat sources and they had last year, they had 81 counts of animal neglect and like the, the process. They got reported and so now they've made a turn to make sure that their their process of um, taking care of their meat is 
uh, more regulated, but prior to it was. So once I found that out, I was like, eh, I don't yeah. know the GMO lists. Um, they're really easily accessible. Um, there's actually a website I can put it in. I don't have like the information right away. Yeah, sorry. I know I like put you on the spot, but I just, <laughs> but, I was just wondering if you had something. Um, there's so. definitely like the GMO list. And I know there's a lot of controversy about GMOs and if they're actually okay for us. And I just choose to, to, eat more and bring more uh, organic or uh, non-GMO foods into our home. And here's the thing is, I have the worst kitchen on the face of the planet. We are in the middle of uh, like saving to remodel our kitchen. I have no bottom cupboards. All I have is upper cupboards and I have one tiny little pantry. I don't know who built this house, but I cannot wait to get a new kitchen. And I don't have a lot of dry goods because I you, I really shop on the outside perimeter of the uh -huh. supermarket because we make everything fresh. Like every week, you know, I make my husband banana bread. He loves banana bread. So I make him a banana bread and I'll, I'll make it a lot, like a massive amount because he could eat a whole banana bread in one sitting. So <laughs> um, knowing that like just taking a little extra time and making those things like our common snacks and stuff. I just make sure like if I'm buying tortilla chips, I'm staying away for, from Tostitos and I'm going more to the, like the La Cantina brand who have, mm -hmm. um, it's like a smaller business, smaller sources, non GMO corn, um, things like that. Um, I'm not, honestly, I'm not a big fan of Annie's. I, I feel like it's just like, um, a pretty label. Of, mm -hmm. of junk so um i just try to buy snacks that i know my kids will like um because it's important for them to have things to turn to and to go to and to eat but right. I, I just i just really just look everything up and yeah. just try to find the best sources but then i also don't beat myself up i try and do my best but i don't beat myself up my kids have like frozen pizza once a week and I'll just make sure that the frozen pizza I get is you know a good one that they'll that they're going to enjoy and they're going to eat and you may maybe a local company that sells it to one of our local stores I try to do that mm -hmm. so I just make sure that you know um, what I'm finding is educating myself because how it started was I felt like crap and I wanted to know why I felt like crap and I knew if I felt like crap my kids have to be you know Right. I mean, they're kind of resilient. Kids are really resilient. But I knew with the behavioral issues that I was having with my daughter that having excess amounts of sugar and dyes and things like that, I had done that research. I had gone and looked up and researched how to feed a child who has ADHD. What are the best sources of food? And I found that clean protein sources were the best sources. Starting your day off with a really good protein meal, like a high protein meal, no sugar. So in the process of me getting healthy and I learned that like, Oh, when I removed this, I felt better, you know? So I went and I searched it and I found out why. So that led to, you know, our whole family kind of eating that way. That's awesome. Um, okay. So let's transition. Cause I know you are like in the background working on a cookbook and you have a, an awesome ebook that um, we'll link to it. So if you guys sign up, you get it. I think it's coming soon. Yep, right. Um, so if they and they subscribe over I'll type that in a second um, in the comments you guys can get this but I want to talk foods and recipes and stuff because I just struggle because I make I literally make like the same meals every week for dinner I eat the same things, and for me that really works my family doesn't always mind but in my heart like I do want to mix it up but I'm in a season of life where I've got a two-year-old at my feet and I find that like if I can put it in the slow cooker I'm golden right like I don't have time to be popping things like even I made meatballs yesterday and it was like, literally took me five minutes to do the whole thing. And I like, was struggling to get even that done, yeah. you know? I mean, she does the help and then I let her help a lot. Um, but it takes, you know, so much longer. But to bring it back to kind of simplifying healthier meals for our family, um, I would love to hear like your advice on how to start. If you're like, I don't even know what to cook. I'm struggling. I want to use my slow cooker. Like, I don't know if you have, I don't have an Instapot, but I know they're like all the I mean, age and like <laughs> everybody I know I can get one. Um, do you watch This Is Us? Yes. Do you watch yeah. Okay. So then I, now I'm like, do I even want my crock pot? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, 
it's just too much. Though I know that, like, just a side note, the Crock-Pot maker people, like, the, the Crock-Pot brand, like, released a statement about, like, the safety of Crock-Pots. Then they were like, you should always unplug appliances. So literally, I was, like, unplugging <laughs> yeah. everything. But, um, you know, but there's always, but in my mind, for a busy mom, right, like, using a slow cooker is, like, your best friend, or now this Instapot that I'm going to find out about. Yeah. But um, I would love to hear just kind of, like, either some of, like, your go-to easiest, like, family favorite things, um, and then maybe giving us some advice on how we can take those things our families love that, like, for me, I always steered away from crock pots for years because I felt like every recipe I found was full of, like, cream of crab soup, and I was like, no, not doing yeah. this. Um, and maybe you can help me, too, because I swear, like, everything comes out dry. Like, I don't know what I'm not doing right, but I'm like, why is this still dry? <laughs> There's so much liquid. So that was a lot to toss at you. But, no. You know, you know, give me some recipes and then give me some tips on how I can like make over some of those things to just make it simpler for myself and like I don't want I hate when I make dinner and like Dean look Ari like it won't eat anything right now but Dean will just be like what is this <laughs> there's some make and he's like this was really good Kara we put it on a list to make again yeah we've restarted our meal plans because I asked him I said I need a list of like our 14 favorite meals right because that's like a good place to start and literally all together we came up with like four things and we were like that's really all we eat and i was like oh no <laughs> that like no we need something okay. so i had made a solution of one new recipe a week i'm getting there but i need some help so, so well this is where and... like i'm an expert i don't need to google anything so i feel like people call themselves expert in anything but i really feel like food is my expertise because i love to eat i love to entertain and the thing is is i grew up like kind of like we ate the same 10 meals, like always, because, you know, we grew up in, um, we weren't like financially fortunate. So my mom really did her best to make the best comfort meals that fed a family of five. And I had two brothers, so they ate like crazy. So, mm -hmm. okay. So dialing it all the way back, our favorite meals in our house have always been chili, beef stew, chicken soup, um, let's see what else we got. Chicken cacciatore. Um, let's see. Um, chicken chowder. Um, uh, meatballs and sauce. Uh, lasagna. Uh, like those are like the top requested things. Like my kids always ask me for. So what I did was I looked at how I normally made them. So for me, outside of using our crock pot, um, it's a process. It's like a process. Like meatballs are a process. I don't care what anybody says because the way I was taught to make meatballs, you make your own sauce. So it's like a two day process. The sauce is one day, mm -hmm. meatballs are the next day. Well, I learned that I am not my grandmother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, she probably, you know, she's an amazing woman, but she had a lot of time on her hands. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, so the things that I learned were for my week, I try to make meals that have the same ingredients. One, it saves me a lot of money Two, mm -hmm. I can do a lot of prep work in the beginning and just add it to the individual meals. So let's say my family loves chili. Like they absolutely love chili. My kids will like literally sit with a bowl of chili and a whole container of sour cream and a bag of chips and they will go to town. <laughs> So chili for me, like, um, can be spaced out for a couple different meals, but you don't really just want ch chili every single day. So right. I, when I make my chili, <clears throat> the, um, I usually use ground turkey or I use lentils. Depends on like, we're plant-based right now. Well, my husband and I are plant-based right now, but my kids, you know, so they eat turkey. So I'll make them one or whatever, but I will tell you my kids I made it with lentils and they didn't know because I've always made my chili with beans. So they had no idea that there was no meat in there. So that was actually really neat. I didn't say anything to them that, oh, wow, this is really good. So if I, if I'm going to make on Sunday, a Saturday or Sunday, and I'm going to think about my meals ahead for the week, you can even think about your month ahead and your month ahead could be having two fresh crock pot meals a week so you can buy all the stuff you can prep all the stuff you they actually sell slow cooker bags where you, mm -hmm. you take the stuff and you put it in the crock pot um so i'm just going to give you an example so if i'm going to have 
meatballs and sauce. I can take that meatballs and sauce. I can make one day I can have a meat sauce. One day I'll have meatballs. The next day I can have lasagna. And how I do that is I take my meatballs and um, – in our family, we cook the meatballs in the sauce. We don't cook them in the oven, but a lot of people cook them in the oven. So I have my recipe, which I'm going to share next week with you guys. These, everything I'm talking about are recipes that are going to be in next week's cookbook. So. Oh, can I ask a meatball question yeah. real quick? Because I made them last night and I asked this on my Facebook page because I, I want to make a lot and freeze them. When you make meatballs, do I, you, what do you do to freeze them? Do I cook them first yeah. and then put them in the Third, what? I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I cook them and then freeze them? But if I don't cook them, do they stick together? Okay, so the trick with meatballs is you can cook them or you can par cook them. So tell me um, I there's I have two recipes. I either have them with turkey or I have them with a trio of meats, which is veal, pork, and hamburger. Um, so really simple is the thing to a key to a really good meatball is to make sure that they're not dry. And by doing that, is you make sure that your ratio of cheese, Italian, like Parmesan cheese, Italian breadcrumbs, and the trick is, is to adding your sauce into the meatballs. So you take a yes. ladle of your sauce oh. and you put it into your meatballs and you make it. So if you're gonna freeze them and you're gonna batch cook them, my suggestion is, is to take an extra step and take some sheet pans, put some parchment paper down, make them into the balls, put them in the freezer, and then once those are frozen, then put them in your storage container. So then you it. just take them and then you can cook them. Um, however, whether you're going to cook them in the um, oven or if you're going to cook them in your sauce. So um, letting them freeze first before putting them in their storage container will allow them, they won't, you won't have a problem. They won't stick to anything. Thanks. Problem solver. <laughs> yes. Okay. So <laughs> if I'm going to have my crock pot meals, I make sure that um, like, the similar ingredients. So I'm actually not going to talk about meatballs and sauce. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the chili because you, I can with one pot of chili because chili fills you up. Like, so one pot of chili one day I'll have it with rice and sour cream and cheese and stuff for the kids. So the next day I will make a um, cornbread taco bake. So what I do is I take a scoop of the chili I make my cornbread, I mix it together, and this recipe will be in there as well. It's a little bit adapted for it, um, but this is just another version that you can do it. And then I make my cornbread, and then I take the chili, and I put the cornbread, I put it over the cornbread. That's another meal. Okay. So okay, then another thing you could do is you can take a roll of, um, I mean, I guess you could use Pillsbury Crescent Rolls or use um, Immaculate Bakery Crescent Rolls, and you take your crescent rolls and you put them on a sheet pan and you make a ring. So basically you're just lining your crescent rolls up to the triangle stick. You take your chili on the middle, you put a little bit of cheese and you wrap it up and then you've got a chili big ring. Um, yeah. So, um, and then probably like by then everyone's like, okay, mom, I've had enough of chili, but mm -hmm. in my chili, I've got peppers, I've got onions, I've got the ground meat. So, if I took an extra step on that Sunday and I took the ground meat and I made that into taco meat and I put it in the refrigerator and then I sliced up my um, peppers and my onions, then I can have tacos one day, like more mm -hmm. fajitas. So by taking the ingredients, the prep ingredients, um, and bulking them and putting them towards meals at the later end of the week, um, it really helps me a lot to be able to um, make more meals out of the ingredients that I buy from the store because there's nothing more annoying than having five different meals needing 50 different ingredients. Like I really believe in like the base ingredients, tomatoes, onions, peppers, carrots, celery. Those are things I always buy every week because they really transition through all my meals. Um, a trick for not having like, so Everybody always, I, I see this everywhere where they have the taco chicken, where they take their chicken, they put it in their crock pot, they put a can of salsa on it, and then they take their egg beaters, and then they shred up the chicken, but it's dry. You're right, it's dry. Mm -hmm. 
my thing is, is adding a little fat into that. So there's no fat in chicken breast. There barely any fat in chicken breast and there's no fat in salsa. So if you put a little olive oil in the bottom of your pan and you sprinkle some onions on the bottom of your pan, and then you put your salsa, your chicken breast on top, season your chicken breast, put your salsa on and then add in like a half a cup or a cup of chicken stock. When you take your crock pot off, take the lid off of your crock pot, 30 minutes before you're going to serve it, all that extra liquid is going to evaporate and that's going to be delicious yumminess in the bottom and you're not going to be over dry. One thing yes, is... Yes, that is that's my problem. It's always <laughs> so dry. <laughs> one thing one thing in yes. knowing is, is cooking times. Not everything can be left for 12 hours on the thing. So if you have a crock pot that has a timer that can transition it to warm, it's best to invest into a good crock pot. Um, you can make things like I've done. My kids love overnight French toast. So I will make French toast overnight. You take, um, basically it's the same ingredients as French toast. You take your cream, your eggs, cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, a little bit of maple syrup. Um, and then you line the bottom of spray it. You line the bottom of your pan with thick Texas toast style bread that's been left out for like a day or you mean you can use fresh but it's usually better if it's a little bit drier and then you pour that mixture over it and then you sprinkle it with some more cinnamon you can put some walnuts on it and you put the cover on when you wake up in the morning you've got like this amazing um breakfast that they can have but the key is to knowing your temperatures <laughs> knowing that that's something that needs to be cooked on low because it's going to be cooking for eight hours overnight, most likely. Um, right. So making sure that you know not everything needs to be cooked on high. Um, an Instant Pot is the best investment that you can make because it's also a slow cooker. It also has the slow cooking option. So you can do your high pressure cooking if you're in a pinch, like you forget to start or put all your ingredients in the crock pot from frozen to the table can be about an hour um, within your crock, within your Instapot. So, but you can also use your Instapot to saute. You can use it to also use it as a slow cooker. So it's, it's really like an all in one tool. And I'm sure that's probably why crock pot felt the dig a little bit from this is us too, because they probably already felt a hit on their things because Instapot <laughs> is blowing off the world. <laughs> Yeah. So, right. Um, I mean, all right. One pot is on my list, but I definitely need it in my life. <laughs> so one tip okay, that I, I have is you are when you are cooking something like beef stew in your crock pot, sear your meat first before you put it in with the all like your vegetables and your sauce and stuff like that. Because what it does is it locks in the flavor and it locks in the um, the fat within the meat. So then it's super tender and it doesn't dry out and it doesn't like, like that chewy taste of like beef that's been in the crock pot for too long. So I always, if I make chili, I saute and ground my beef. Like I brown my, my beef first with the onions and then I put it in the crock pot. Um, that is the same if you're going to use it as a freezer meal. So if you're going to make a freezer meal, um, what I do is I take my crock pot and I take either a Ziploc bag or, um, one of those crock pot liners and I stick it in the crock pot and I put my foods in it. So then it kind of like shapes like it. So then I put that on a sheet pan and then I put it in my freezer so that I can literally just it's not like awkward sticking out of the crock pot. Right. It's shaped to the crock pot. So, oh my gosh. Can... Okay. So many tips. So many tips. <laughs> <laughs> so many tips. So many tips. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, Lauren, I um, want to close um, with just one piece of advice that you would give a mom who is like, I really want to start helping my family eat healthier. Um, I'm afraid of the backlash. I'm afraid healthy eating is going to cost us a lot of money. My family's picky. All those excuses they're going to give. What is one thing and one little source of motivation you can give them to just get started with it? Well, I think if we were to take on our whole week in advance, we're all going to be overwhelmed. And we're all going to feel like the backlash. So if you can make it one meal a week, one meal a week, that is 
makes you feel like Sunday meals, like Sunday meals sitting around the table are so important to me. And right now it's not happening because we have a crazy busy life. So I feel like if I know that I'm making at least three or four meals that we're eating at home and that we're having, um, I feel good. I feel like I'm giving my, but that's an established, that's established. Like I make three meals a day. Like, you know, I'm lucky enough to be able to be home to be able to do that. But if you're, you find yourself in a position where you're like, okay, I want to transition. I want to do this, but I don't know. How to, I don't know where to start from. Well, first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to loving life in the fit lane.com and sign up for my mailing list. So you can get the cookbook next week. And one thing, just make a goal of one dinner, a dinner a week to start or one meal a day. And that, you know, can be switching your kids from having um, like a sugary cereal in the morning to helping them, teaching them like making pancakes ahead of time, some healthy pancakes ahead of time, you know, like not like the, the quick shake and pour ones, like, you know, you know, find a good mix ahead of time, put them in the freezer, and then all they have to do is pop them in the toaster or in the microwave. Just take it one day at a time, because I will tell you, from my own personal experiences, I couldn't fix what was going on in my family. I couldn't fix what was going on anywhere else until I fixed myself. And I had to get myself um, in a path and in a routine. And this has happened multiple times in my own journey where I've had to take a step back and focus on myself. And selfishly, that might be, but actually it fills my family. So if you are a person who is struggling with eating healthy yourself, Start with yourself. Start with one healthy meal for yourself a day instead of on your lunch break heading down to the fast food store. Pack your lunch and bring it with you. And then, you know, transition that into packing a healthier lunch for your kids or making a healthier meal, getting them involved. But just start with one thing at a time. And I will tell you the one thing that um, I did in January uh, first, it was actually the second, was I took sugar out of our family. So I had a long conversation with my kids. Sugar was getting absolutely out of control. I had was in like a pretty tough spot mentally, um, November and December or, uh, from like September to December. <laughs> and I like let things go a lot and the kids weren't feeling that great. Um, they were starting to get colds again. They were feeling sluggish and lethargic. They weren't performing as well at sports. They were having trouble sleeping at night. They were ha tr having trouble focusing and their attitudes were off. And I just knew that it had to do without the consistency of having, you know, healthy meals all the time. So I told them, I said, September 1st, there's no more sugar coming in this house because it had been Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays, right. just a constant influx of sugar. So they were mad at me. They were mad. But you know what? I would much rather have them mad for me not giving them sugar than them to feel like I did when I was 27 years old when I had never learned to escape eating habits. Yeah. So yeah. it's really just about being an advocate for your family and being an advocate for your kids. I talk to women all the time who say their husbands are so set in their way. And I will tell you, I am married to a stubborn Irishman. And if he can go from his coming in the house with Taco Bell cheese on his shirt and eating the meals that I had, <laughs> eating before he came home to eat the, meal, the healthy meals that I was cooking to now being a plant-based um, athlete himself, I know that if he is willing to change that anybody can, and it's just about <laughs> within yourself and taking the pressure off that you need to be perfect. We compare ourselves so much to these social media moms. I screw up all the time, all the time. Like, like last week I had my wisdom teeth out. I, my kids, my husband picked up food three times for the kids and that's not normal for us. But I was like, you know what? I'm not going to feel bad about this. This is just where life is right now. But I know that I have the control and that I'm not going to feel guilty about it. If things don't go the right way, I'm not going to feel guilty about giving my kids peanut butter and jelly. Like I will never forget somebody who didn't have kids made mention of kids eating peanut butter and jelly and how it's like neglectful and abuse. And I was so mad because I don't believe giving your kids peanut butter and jelly is abuse, but maybe check out the purpose of where the peanut butter and the jelly is coming from, you know? So right. if, if 
and that's a really good tip right there. If you don't want things to necessarily change overnight, the only thing you can change is the ingredients. So just check your ingredient sources, check those labels. If you're giving your kids peanut butter and it's loaded with sugar and sugar is the second ingredient or the only peanuts and sugar is the only ingredients in there, just look for a better label. You know, if you're getting peanut butter and jelly, give them actual fruit spread, you know, like that's not filled with sugar. Just do things, just change the ingredients. And that's really what I did with transitioning. I just changed the formula. I just changed the ingredients. I went to cleaner, wholer food ingredients, and it really wasn't that big of an impact because they were still getting the flavors. They were still getting, you know, the deliciousness, but it wasn't negatively sourced food. It was, you know, healthier choices. And I will tell you, they don't eat as much. My kids eat a lot. My kids eat a lot, but they don't eat as much as if their their snacks and their meals are made with whole foods. They, I mean, my kid can eat a whole bag of chips in like a day, in like a whole day, but I would much rather it be tortilla chips, just regular tortilla chips than Doritos. So just look at your sources, right. look at where your food's coming from, give yourself some grace and some forgiveness and just, just know that you're doing your best and just, be, just educate yourself. Sorry, my dogs are crazy. Just educate yourself and take care of no. yourself first and give yourself some grace. Bella, come here, come here, come here. Thank you. We had a good time here. Ari's like still upstairs. I can hear it through the <laughs> vents, like shouting, go to bed. But, um, thank you. You totally... I've really been slipping with the ingredients I'm giving my kids and you really inspired me to like, just get back to our roots and what's important. So um, moms, if you're watching, um, I'm going to put the link one more time. Loving life in the fit lane. If you go to subscribe next week, she has a, a uh, it's free, right? Yes. It's the ebook free, free ebook for you. Um, someone asked in the comments if it was uh, vegan. Is it a plant-based one or no? Uh, no, there will be um, some plant-based recipes in there, but um, that's going to be separate. Okay, so this is not, it's not a plant-based one, but if you are plant-based, just wait. Make sure you subscribe anyway, so you can get a bunch of stuff. Um, and there's some other recipes on there. Um, Lauren, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank, thank so you for fun. having me. I'm, I'm a rambler. I love yeah. to talk. I could make this three hours, so thank you for No, this was, this was perfect. And guys, I saw a couple people tag themselves in the video. I'm sure to watch later. Um, share it if you enjoyed. Um, just push it out there. Let's give you know, as many women as we can, just knowing about their own health and taking charge in their kitchen, because that's, you know, it's our job to, to do that and to take care of ourselves. So, Lauren, thanks. You have a really good day. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Next week, the cookbook will, it really is family centered. You, you empowered me to get the ball rolling. It's in recipes that I've had for a really long time that I just put them all together. So I think this will go perfectly with this uh, interview. Awesome. Right. I'm going to go sign up now. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys, guys. Have a good one. You too. Bye.